Tonight on Mellow TV Sports, the Jamaica Scorpions draft Alwyn Williams and Adeen Smith. Promoters of horse racing report very fast ticket sales ahead of racing on Saturday. And Bayern Munich have been crowned Bundesliga champions. We bowl off Meadow TV Sports with cricket as the Jamaica Scorpions yesterday secured the services of all-rounders Dean Smith and Alwyn Williams in the West Indies Professional Players Draft for the Super 50 Cup and the West Indies World Championship. Now, the draft was held via Zoom meeting and saw Smith taken in the first round while Williams was taken in the second. They join a Scorpion squad which includes John Campbell, Jermaine Blackwood, and Kruma Bonner, Paul Palmer Jr., Marquino Mindley, Derville Green, Andre McCarthy, Nicholson Gordon, Akeem Fraser, Dennis Bully, Patrick Hardy, Aldine Thomas, and Chivor Royal. Still on cricket, West Indies assistant coach Roddy Estwick is of the view that the Caribbean fast bowling stocks are at their highest since the 1980s. The Caribbean side is getting ready to face England in a three-test series and a lot of focus is being placed on the bowling attack. England have felt the heat from the West Indies' battery of quicks on more than one occasions in recent years, most notably during heavy defeats in Barbados and Antigua 18 months ago. Kimo Roach, Shannon Gabriel and Jason Holder have drawn comparison with the West Indies' attacks of old, but Eswick has also mentioned of Ralston Chase and Raheem Cornwall. It's, it's a bowling group, and, and depending on the conditions, um, th those two can be can, can be very handy. Um, Ralston, obviously, is a specialist batsman with, with five test match hundreds, so he, he comes in and plays the all rounders role. But in, in Raheem Cornwall, I think he might he might spin, um, spring a surprise on the English batters because if it ever if it ever starts to spin and bounce, then he's going to be a, a handful. And they will, and a lot of those players remember who toured. The West Indies with, with with the England A team, I think either in 2000 or 17 or 18, they will remember Rakim Cornwall and what effect he had he had on them. So we're looking forward to it, and and, and you know, so as a bowling group, we're quite happy. Now on to some exciting horse racing news, as the promoters of the sport at Caymanus Park are reporting brisk ticket sales ahead of the resumption on racing on Saturday. Tickets went on sale today as the sport of Kings is set to become the first local sport to emerge from the coronavirus lockdown with an eight-race program. The industry has been on pause for some three months and will be reopening under strict guidelines from the Ministry of Health as it seeks to avoid the spread of COVID-19. These include masks for the jockeys in the jockey's room, saddling barn, parade ring areas during the parade of horses and while leading to the starting gates. Staff at the track will also wear masks and regularly sanitize. Patrons will also wear masks and be allowed in the grandstand, clubhouse and north lounge and will have to maintain social distancing. We conclude a league today as Bayern Munich today secured an outstanding eighth successive German Bundesliga title. The Polish striker Robert Lewandowski chested down Jerome Boateng's chipped pass to net the winner as they beat Werder Bremen 1-0 and sealed the league with two games to go. Now Bayern's 11th straight Bundesliga win puts them 10 points clear of Borussia Dortmund who have three games left. Bayern finished the match with 10 men though after Canadian wing-back Alfonso Davis was sent off for two yellow card offences. Poland striker Lewandowski has now scored 31 Bundesliga goals this season, a tally that equals the single-season scoring record by a foreign player in the league. Gabon striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, now at the Gunners at Arsenal, scored 31 Bundesliga goals for Borussia Dortmund in 2016-2017. Also today, Bayern Mönchengladbach defeated Wolfsburg 3-0. 
Freiburg clipped her to Berlin to one, while Union Berlin had a 1-0 win over Paderborn. The English Premier League resumes tomorrow with Hoda's Manchester City home to the Gunners Arsenal after Aston Villa battles Sheffield United. Finally, in the sports news tonight, the U.S. Open Tennis Grand Slam will be held in late August as part of the New York's reopening from shutdowns caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The United States Tennis Association, USTA, has said plans were in place for this year's tournament scheduled to begin on August 31 until September 13 to go ahead at Flushing Meadows in New York pending government approval. Governor Andrew Cuomo today has said that the event will be held without fans. The USTA will take extraordinary precautions to protect players and staff, including robust text testing, additional cleaning, extra locker room space, and dedicated housing and transportation. Players include Serbian Novak Djokovic, Spanish man Rafael Nadal, and the Australian Nick Kyrgios and Samola Halep have expressed doubts over playing in this year's competition. British number one Dan Evans has urged Djokovic and Nadal to take part in order to help lower ranked players survive this coronavirus crisis financially. And those are the stories making sports news tonight. We now head back to the news desk with Shelly and Hill. Thank you, Christopher. Now, in another news update, the Governor General Program for Excellence, GGPE, has reversed its decision to cancel the 2020 Summer of Service Program after assessing the impact of the novel coronavirus COVID-19 and the resultant increase in the need for financial assistance to tertiary students the decision has been taken to have an altered version of the program. Adhering to the guidelines provided by the Ministry of Health, the GGPE will allow program participants to volunteer over the seven-month period from January to July 2021, instead of the usual eight-week period during the summer months of June and July. The extended period will allow for greater care in the execution of the required 96 service hours and allow for ample time to respond to the fluid situation presented by the coronavirus. The SOS program, which provides scholarships for youth volunteers who are matriculating or are completing their first undergraduate year, will be launched on June 16 and welcomes applications up to July 31. The program rewards academic excellence among the students who desire to pursue a tertiary education, but whose financial circumstances limit this possibility. The GGPE says it will make available over $5 million in scholarships to five selected participants in this year's program, with each participant being awarded $350,000 per year for up to three years to cover tuition only. Still making news, members of the Falmouth Police Station in Trelawney came together yesterday to award auxiliary workers for their dedicated service to the upkeep of the station. Commanding officer for the parish, Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, in his remarks during yesterday's ceremony, expressed the importance of having auxiliary workers. You know, it's very important to understand the role that everybody plays in your life. And... Uh, Sometimes, uh, with, the, with the chustle and bustle of the, of the work, sometimes you, you tend to forget. And uh, for Trelawney, for the, for, for the Jamaica Constabulary Force, we know how important just about everybody, the role that everybody plays in, in, in us serving the public, ser serving our customers. Uh, we have always known the importance of our ancillary staff, always known the importance. But I tell you that the onset of this global pandemic would have, would, have, would have brought it even more forcefully home to us. When we sat down as a management team and we realized how important it is for our surroundings to be clean and to be sanitized, and nowadays even, even, even more than once per day, and then we realized that we were, we were always leaning on these great people, these great people who come here in the early hours of the morning and start to prepare for us to come and to do our sworn duty. 
and as such it was a discussion among the management team to, to start to show this kind of appreciation. Superintendent Rickes also said that the work of the auxiliary staff is of far more importance now in light of the country fighting the spread of the deadly coronavirus. Because we were now even demanding so much more of them. We were asking them on the hour to go around and to start to, to sanitize door knobs and, 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 and to re-sanitize desktops. We, were, we are now demanding so much more of these individuals, not with, not with more pay, mind you, Bishop, but we ask them and they have done that. They have, do, they have been doing such a great work and as such, uh, it's really a pleasure for me to be here today to, to lead the team here in recognizing the first such awardee, the first such person who has given 22 years to this uh, establishment, to this formation here. Uh, Ms. Bev, affectionately known as Ms. Bev. One recipient that has worked at the station for the last 22 years, Beverly Grant, in giving thanks, expressed that she is proud to be able to work in her capacity to assist in keeping the workspace at its best. I'm working with the Minister of um, Security for 22 years and I'm proud of my work. It's not the pay much, but you know, you can make things out of little. So I'm very glad and I appreciate what they did for me today because all the years you feel like you're left out. But today I'm very grateful. I'm very joyful and glad for what they have done for me today. And now to end tonight's newscast, here are the main points. Passenger dies shortly after arriving at the Sangster International Airport. Transport Operators Development Sustainable Service and its associates give the government a seven-day ultimatum to respond to the plight of the public transport sector. And Westmoreland Police list 28-year-old Jerome Calhoun of Savannah Lamar as a person of interest. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelly Ann Hill. Stay safe and pleasant viewing. <laughs>